you probably think you know X79. It was Intel's second high-end desktop platform, the one that took their phenomenal Sandy and Ivy Bridge architectures and really let them stretch their legs with higher core counts and larger caches. If you're balling on a budget in 2023, you might know all about the super cheap X server Xeons for Socket 2011 and that some of them can be overclocked. But if you browse through that generation of CPUs on Intel's ARC website, their best CPU for this platform is curiously absent. The Xeon E5 1680v2 has been the most requested CPU review since I started doing them, and in truth I was a bit sceptical. It looks great on paper. One of the handful of overclockable Xeons available for the 2011 socket, this 8-core 16-thread CPU wasn't available from retail. As an OEM exclusive, it would only have ever been available in pre-builds, and the only one I can find for certain that ever used it was the 2013 Mac Pro, better known as the Trash Can. While that system was notoriously thermally limited and lacking in gamer appeal, their unreliable GPUs have meant that many of these systems have been retired with perfectly functional CPUs in them. As a result, you can pick up an E5 1680v2 for about £80 to £100 pounds right now, and paired with a genuine X79 motherboard, or one of the handful of AliExpress models that can also overclock, this could be the centre of a pretty powerful gaming machine. Like I said, on paper. Without any other context, this CPU looks very appealing, but in 2023 there's some stiff competition on the used CPU market, and I think that in reviewing the 1680v2 I need to take that into account. I recently looked at the i7-5960X, and that CPU has some highly competitive specs. The Haswell E chip has the same 22 nanometer lithography as the Ivy E 1680v2, and the same core and thread count. It is lacking somewhat in cache, down to 20 megabytes instead of the Xeon's 25, and all things being equal, that would put the i7 at a small but significant disadvantage. But all things are not equal. Haswell E, unlike regular desktop Haswell and all flavours of Ivy Bridge, is compatible with DDR4 RAM. Although memory controllers for DDR4 were still in their early days, it's pretty trivial to run a 5960X with RAM significantly higher clocked than the Xeon's DDR3. Also, my previous testing has suggested that some of the games in my benchmark lineup, such as Valorant and Battlefield 5, might benefit from the 5960X's party trick, AVX2. It's my belief that this instruction set, introduced with Haswell, is going to be a decisive factor in this fight. I'm testing the Xeon in an ASUS X79 Extreme 4 motherboard with 16GB of DDR3-2133 in quad channel. I had originally intended to test with 32GB, but I found that using 8 4GB sticks of 2133 made the system unstable and I couldn't complete several benchmarks. The CPU will be overclocked to 4.5GHz on all cores and kept cool under a 240mm AIO from Cooler Master. The i7 was tested at the same clock speeds on a Gigabyte X99 motherboard, with 32 gigs of quad-channel DDR4 clocked at 3200. We've seen that Valorant thrives at high clock speeds and with large amounts of cache, but recently I've begun to suspect that AVX2 is another major contributing factor. With both the E5 1680v2 and i7 5960x at the same clock speeds, the slightly higher IPC on Haswell compared to Ivy Bridge and the larger cache on the Xeon might have cancelled each other out, except for the fact that the Xeon doesn't support that newer instruction set. Anyway, this is mostly speculation on my part, but it makes a kind of sense to me. This CPU still does phenomenally well for its age, pushing just over 300 FPS on average. I found in the past that Battlefield 5 hasn't been kind to older architectures, with the i7-3960X and 4930K being the best of the bunch but still suffering from atrocious 1% and 0.1% lows. Again, I suspect AVX2 has something to do with it, but it seems that if that's the case, then the 1680v2 can simply brute force through it. Although the 136 FPS averages are a massive 30% lower than the 5960X, they're also about 30% faster than the 3960X, and the overall experience is significantly smoother than anything else I've tested on X79. <music> 
Fortnite's results were, well, pretty damn surprising to be honest. D51680 V2 pulls a win out of its ass here, with a small but repeatable 5% advantage over the i7-5960X at just over 300 FPS on average. If I were trying to reason out why this is, I'd say it's maybe something to do with the larger cache? Although this is still a fair way short of what modern CPUs like the Ryzen 5 5600X can pull off, this really is nothing to sneeze at. I nearly lost my call cool with Flight Simulator this time, I really did. The Microsoft app decided it didn't recognise the installation and tried to download a 150GB patch. I attempted to stop it, but nope, the whole folder was wiped and I had to download it again. I have a 50 megabit connection, Microsoft. I don't have time for your bullshit. Anyway, after installing it for the second time in a month, I finally managed to do my usual run from Central Park to the battery and back again, which saw an average of 54 FPS, drawing pretty much level with the Haswells, but suffering significant stutter. On a lighter note, Spider-Man Remastered proved to be a decent result for the 1680v2, though it did lose out to both of the Haswell e-chips. With RT disabled, the margin was reasonably small, and with an average still around the 90fps mark, you probably wouldn't notice the difference. Turning on RT, however, will cause your spirits to drop, as well as the frames, as the 8-core Xeon only barely beats the previous generation's 6-core i7 at 55fps and 20% less than its 8-core counterpart. Cyberpunk is far more favourable to the IP Bridge chip, though still a little behind the 5960X. The non-RT run is bordering on GPU Limited, and if I continue testing higher-performing chips I might have to drop quality settings a little, but there's still just enough of a difference to be notable. At Soissant Nerf FPS, the Xeon falls 5 frames below the 5960X and a similar margin above the 3960X. With RT enabled, the field opens up somewhat. The 7 FPS difference between the two 8 cores represents about a 15% difference in performance. The story might be starting to sound familiar when we get to Red Dead Redemption 2. Once more, averages are slightly below the two Haswell EI7s, though the margins are pretty small. At 83 FPS on average, the 1680v2 is about 10% slower than the i7-5960X, though I did happen to see significantly better 1 and 0.1% lows on the Xeon. The upgrade from a 3960X, however, is a bit more subtle. There's less than a 10% difference, and both look pretty playable to me. Once more, I have to confess, there's not much point in my testing Elden Ring like this. With lower spec CPUs there can be instances of the CPU being the limiting factor, but the E5 1680 V2 is not troubled at all. There are some minor variations between the 1 and 0.1% lows of the top few CPUs in this chart, but it's all pretty academic. If anyone has any suggestions for a popular CPU intensive single player title to replace Elden Ring, preferably something relatively recent and without a 60fps cap, leave a comment below. Finally, the Civ 6 AI benchmark run sees the 1680v2 beat the 3960x by almost a quarter of a second, averaging 6.82 seconds per turn. This does, however, leave it slightly behind both the Haswell e-chips. The X99 system has a tendency to under-report power consumption data, so I picked up an external power meter and measured both systems from the wall during a Cinebench R23 run, and saw only about a 1% difference between the two. Although Haswell is generally pretty efficient compared to previous generations of chip, it seems that running it at 4.5GHz with 3200 speed RAM pretty much levels the playing field.
The final factor in this competition between 8 core behemoths is the price. My total investment for the Xeon E5 1680v2, ASUS X79 motherboard and 16 gigs of fast DDR3 comes to about £215. You may have to be prepared to pay slightly more for the CPU depending on your local market, potentially equivalent to over £100 or 120 US dollars. Motherboards can be found more cheaply by going to the lesser known marks, though you may need to hunt around somewhat to find one that can overclock. As for RAM, 2133 is probably overkill, and 1333 or 1600 could be had more cheaply. Just make sure you buy four sticks if your motherboard supports four channels. Meanwhile, I paid a total of £275 for the X99 kit, though that's in part down to my choice of RAM, which is intended to use with more modern platforms. Again, I got a great deal on the CPU at just £55, and the going rate online seems to fluctuate between 60 and 90 X99s are once more in a similar situation to X79, and you might get a good deal on an AliExpress model. Again, research before buying to make sure you're not buying junk, or better yet, hunt around for a good deal on an ASUS, MSI or Gigabyte. Using my purchase prices as reference, the Xeon setup costs about 80% of the i7 and gives between 75 and 105% of the performance in return, depending on the game. Whether or not that difference is worth it depends on a few factors. Availability, price and your own willingness to use decade old components compared to 7 or 8 year old components. DDR3 can be had extremely cheaply but RAM doesn't last forever and when compared to the CPU and motherboard it's probably about the most likely part to fail. Put simply then, as a drop-in upgrade for X79 owners, the E5 1680v2 is a superb gaming CPU, probably the best on the platform, and might actually represent good value, depending on what your local market looks like. However, if you're not against doing a full system upgrade, I'd be more inclined to suggest stepping up to X99, and either the i7-5960X or the Xeon equivalent for modern conveniences like DDR4 and NVMe storage. Better yet, look at the Ryzen 5 5600 or i5-12400 if they're even remotely similar in price, as you could find they work out a lot cheaper in the long run. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.